This is the Paros 3 Swallow, and it is very easy to see why you would drink it, drink it, and drink it again. Let me tell you about it in this week's Whiskey Review. Welcome back to the channel, my name is Matt, I'm a whiskey nerd and like I said this is the Powers 3 Swallow Single Pot Still Irish Whiskey. Let me get into the glass and I'll tell you a bit more about it. Now Powers when they were creating this whiskey, they kind of were aiming to recreate one of their older styles of whiskey, the whiskey that they would have had back in the day, back when they were kind of originally starting off in the Irish whiskey business. And the name Three Swallows comes from the little story they would have of the three coachmen, the guys who would drive the coaches full of whiskey. Just on a cold night, they'd be kind of huddling up under blankets, under their coats, and they'd take out little hip flasks, and they'd each have a swallow of whiskey. That'd be one, two, three swallows of whiskey, hence the name. And the style of whiskey also pays homage to the kind of historical Irish whiskey scene. So if you're not familiar with it, Irish whiskey has a style that's unique to Ireland. It's called pot still whiskey. And pasta whiskey is essentially a mix of malted and unmalted barley. So distillers are able to use at least 30% malted, at least 30% unmalted, and at most 5% other grains in their mash bills. This gives distillers a great range of freedom which they can use in their whiskies. So they could use maybe 70% malted and 30% unmalted. They could use some other combination in between like that, or they could introduce other grains like oats or rye into the mix to try and add new flavors and new dimensions. The one thing that is a little bit annoying about kind of Irish pot still whiskey producers is that they don't typically share their mash bills. Most distillers keep their mash bills a secret to prevent other distilleries from copying them. So it is a little bit annoying that you can't see exactly what makes each one tick, but if you try multiple different styles of pasta whiskey, you will see that they are all completely different because they have that different mash bill in them. So while we don't know the exact mash bill that goes into this whiskey, we do know some about the aging. So it's aged in second and third fill bourbon casks with a small amount that was aged in sherry casks. So this is going to give you a kind of a smoothed out kind of expression of the whiskey. It's not going to be overly butterscotchy, overly vanilla-y. It's not going to have loads of those sherry notes like the dried fruits, the nuts that you'd normally expect from a sherry. It's also not going to have a huge amount of grain sweetness coming forward because it is a pot still whiskey, so there's no grain whiskey in the blend. So it should be a relatively smoothed out and very easy to drink whiskey. It also comes in at 40% ABV, so it's very easy to drink and there won't be any real burn. So let's go in for the nose. Cheers. Okay, I know I said there wouldn't be a huge amount of vanilla, but the first note I get is vanilla, a bit of caramel, and kind of like a, kind of like a banana. If you think of a banana that was cooked in caramel, I think it's called a banana's foster is the dessert. Mm, kind of like that. Or if you're on this side of the, the Atlantic, a banoffee pie where you get this kind of caramel and banana mixed together on top of a biscuity base. So there is a nice kind of like a digestive or a graham cracker or a graham cracker, I think they're called in America. A nice kind of biscuity grain kind of sweetness coming through, but it's not like that sharp grain alcohol note you get. It's more like the actual smell of the grains. There's not a huge amount of spice coming through, and normally in a pasta whiskey, I'd expect to get a bit of maybe white pepper, maybe black pepper, maybe some cloves and cinnamon, but there's not a huge amount of spice coming through. It is more of that kind of smoothed out expression. Like if I was gonna nail it down, I'd say maybe there's a bit of clove spice coming through, but it is quite mild. So let's go in for the palate and see if some of those flavors develop more and see if they become more apparent. Cheers much more spice on the palate definitely as it hits your tongue you get more of that clove as you swallow it you get a little bit of the cinnamon maybe a bit of the white pepper coming through there more of that spiciness you still get that sweetness the vanilla the caramel the bananas coming through from the nose kind of more delivering into the palate as well but you do get a bit more spice I'm also as I'm breathing a little bit I'm also getting a little bit of coconut so I'm gonna go in again and see if I can get more of that kind of coconut flavor coming through because that's an odd note to get. Okay, yeah. Like, there's a little bit of coconut flavor in there. If you know like the dried out, the desiccated coconut you get, it's kind of like that. It's subtle, it's not like you're eating fresh coconut. It's that kind of dried out coconut. Just that little bit of a different note coming through. 
it's nice though, it's, it's actually quite refreshing. And of course, surrounded by all that caramel, surrounded by that banana, the bit of vanilla, and then the grain sweetness coming through as well, coming more into the end of the palate. So let's go in for the finish and see how those flavors fade away and what's the last note I get. Cheers. Okay, as I'm letting it finish away, again, like I said, you get the coconut, you get the um, little bit of banana fading away there, the caramel is there, then the grain sweetness comes up much more apparent. You get a kind of biscuity note, small amount of that tingly spice that I got from the early part of the palate does make a return to the finish and then it kind of fades away pretty quickly. Like there's not a huge evolution on this whiskey. There's actually not a huge evolution from the nose into the finish. Um, maybe that's because it is coming at 40%. It's just nice, very easy to drink. Definitely I can see why they would name it Three Swallows because you could go back to this whiskey very easily and just enjoy it. I think if they had increased the proof a little bit, this whiskey would be a bit better because you would have a little bit more depth, you'd have a little bit more complexity to it, you'd have just that bit more weight behind it. So if you've tried the Powers John's Lane release, that comes out at 46% ABV and it does have that bit more body, that bit more weight behind it. Coming in at 40% ABV, I think it's just not carrying a huge amount of that weight into the finish that it had maybe in the nose and into the palate. That said though, this is probably one of the most budget friendly pot still whiskies you can get on the market. I mean, it's definitely, I think about 20 euro cheaper than Redbreast or Greenspot, which are the kind of pillars of pot still whiskey. So I think it does come in at more of a budget friendly price. So probably that 40% ABV is a bit more fair if you think of it like that. This is definitely a whiskey I think I would go back to frequently. If I just want a simple drink, I don't want to be overly challenged, you know, I don't want to have something that I have to sit with and I have to unpack and I have to think about. If I just want a whiskey, I can pour myself a glass and I can enjoy it. This would be something I'd definitely go for. I've heard these kind of bottles being described as like a guard bottle. So you put this bottle in front of maybe something rare or something collectible. So if you ever just want a quick whiskey, you don't reach for that really rare, really collectible, really expensive whiskey and say you go for this one, which is still going to make you happy it's still gonna be a good enjoyable dram but just it'll save you from drinking that really expensive whiskey and I think that's all to say about this it's a nice easy to drink whiskey I like it I mean it's something that I would keep on my shelf like I said maybe as a guard whiskey it's not something that maybe if I was gonna show someone what hostile whiskey is all about I probably wouldn't start with this I would start with the red breast with the green spot whiskey even though they do command that slightly higher price tag, I think they're maybe better examples of what pot still whiskey is all about. Still though, like I said, really easy to enjoy. If you wanna see more reviews, I put out whiskey reviews every Wednesday and cocktail recipes every Friday. So subscribe, you'll see them all, and I'll see you next time. Sláinte.